My name is Annie Beharry. I am uh, the director of student success here at Service to School. Uh, if you can't hear me, um, let me know in the chat box. If you can hear me, that's also helpful, I guess. Um, and if you are having any troubles hearing, seeing anything, um, we do recommend that you restart your browser and um, potentially your device uh, to reconnect. We find that Chrome works best with these types of webinars. Um, today's webinar is about 30 minutes, um, and then we'll have 10 or 15 minutes worth of questions, depending on what everyone wants to know about. Just keep in mind that your questions are most helpful when they're general, um, not just uh, specific to you, obviously. Um, and I'll share my email at the end so that you have a chance to um, ask any additional questions if you have any. Um, and finally, this webinar is being recorded tonight, so if you um, want to take a look at it again, um, you're more than welcome to. Just give us a few days to get that recording out. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to start our slideshow here. So, as I said earlier, my name is Annie Beharry. Um, I have been working in higher education now for about eight years. I did my undergraduate work at Boston University and then my graduate work at Harvard. Um, as soon as I graduated, I worked in college admissions at Lafayette College. It is a small liberal arts school in um, Northeast Pennsylvania. It's actually the smallest division one school in the country, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then I worked at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, when I was at both schools, I read applications. I um, traveled to do recruitment. Um, when I was at Hopkins, I managed the transfer admissions process. Uh, and then in the last couple of years, I've also read files for Georgia Tech. So um, I all of this to say that I have some knowledge of um, what works and what doesn't work when it comes to essays. Uh, and so that's what I'm here to share with you tonight. Here's what we're gonna be talking about. First, essays, what are they good for? Um, and then we'll talk about some specific essays that you're going to encounter. Um, and then finally, some things to keep in mind. When, I just wanna start with something very foundational, um, which is that essays are really, really important. And, and it might not seem like they should be, but they are. Um, and that's because it's really the only way that you have to share information with colleges um so you are not able to i mean you're able to share information of course with colleges but you're it's the only thing that's coming directly from you so when you think about um your academic transcript for example or your letters recommendation those are all things that are done by other people sent by other people um your transcript obviously is something that you've been working on for years potentially right so this is not the essay is something that's coming really truly directly from you um, and where you are currently to the colleges. And so it's a really great way for you to explain more about yourself, um, maybe explain some situations that you were in, show any growth or development, um, show your excitement for the school. So those are all reasons why essays are super, super important and why they can really make or break admissions decisions. When you have two applicants who are very similar, Sometimes essays can be the thing that, you know, tips you one way over the other. Um, so that's what essays are used for. And I do want to say something very, again, foundational. Um, don't use things like chat GPT or a thesaurus or any other tool when you're writing your essays. And that's because essays should sound authentic. Uh, colleges know who they're admitting. They're admitting adults like yourselves, they're admitting 17 or 18 year olds. We generally know what those people sound like when they talk. Um, and so there's no need to use any anything uh, really to help you sound any different than the person you are, because that's what colleges want. They want to admit you as you are, um, and they want that voice to be authentic. Uh, and obviously it goes without saying, right? Don't use any sort of AI enabled um, tool to help write your essays. Uh, it's only a matter of time before I think colleges start to scan for plagiarism and for the use of things like ChatGPT. So it's something that I want to talk about very briefly because it's so new. Um, and I'm sure none of you will do that, right? Um, all right, so let's also just address very quickly where you find essays. Essays are in the applications themselves, usually in the Common App, 
which is where most of you will be, what you, most of you will be using to apply, um, or the University of California application if, if you're applying to any UCs. So you usually have to create an account and start to fill it out, and then you'll encounter the essays in the application themselves. Um, there's nothing additional that you have to do to find an essay. Um, and last note is that essays do change year to year. In fact, when I was going back um, to kind of update these essays for this year, I was surprised at how many changed from last year. So just know that if you're here and you're interested in applying for the spring or fall of 2025, or if you are, um, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're just here kind of like checking things out a little bit early, just know that what we're talking about today might not be relevant for the year that you're applying. These essays are current for 2023 to 2024. Um, and that's, you'll see that very clearly on all the essays that we look at tonight. Uh, so don't we, that's why we don't encourage you to write essays too far in advance because things are, things are always changing. Uh, we'll look at both transfer and first year essays tonight, um, but just keep in mind that Depending on what where you're applying, you might have to write different essays. I what again in my own research, I found that most of the essays are are the same. Um, so you'll it, hope this all of this will apply to to everything that you're doing. But just know that if you're applying as a first year, you might have to write different essays compared to when you're applying as a transfer student. Okay, let's get into it. Let's get into these essays. So um, there are the biggest part of the essay writing process are the the personal statements the personal statements is just a general long essay um, and when i say long they're usually about 650 words maximum that's what the common app personal statement is and again that's what most of you will be using and um it's general in the sense that it's going to go to every school that you apply to so this is not an essay that um is directly for one school or another. It should not be school specific. You should not write at the end of your Common App essay, this is why I wanna to go to Michigan. Um, this is a general essay and it's really meant for you to talk about your, um, talk about yourself in a way that colleges will um, learn some new information about you. So let's take a look at what the prompts are. So here we have um, the 2023-2024 Common App essay prompts. And as you can see, um, there are seven options. And the last one is sort of a pick your own option. Um, these essays should be personal. That's my number one tip when it comes to a personal statement. Um, it is meant for you to talk about yourself as you are today. A common mistake um, is for a lot of adults to write their essays starting off with, I was born when, or as a kid, I, and while it might be relevant to the story that you're telling at the end of the day, um, it doesn't, it's, it's not a good use of words for you to go so far back into your history, right? Um, we want you to kind of start off with who you are right now. Again, that's who colleges are admitting. They're admitting the person that you are, not the student that you were when you were in high school, not the, the kid that you were when you first learned how to swim. Um, so you want this to be relevant, new information um, that isn't already in the application. Another thing that you should know about the Common App personal statement or really any personal statement, it's not a standard five paragraph academic essay, right? So you don't need a beginning, middle, conclusion. Um, it's a narrative, it's a story that you're telling. And so um, you can use all the elements of a story, things like dialogue or a shift in time. Um, it's, a, it's a personal story that you are telling. Um, colleges are going to tell you, I've heard this everywhere um, when I travel, that these essays should be so personal that it can only be written by you. And that really means that you're looking for a level of detail um, so that colleges know this is this person, right? So again, feel free to use all the tools of a narrative, dialogue, perspective, um, a change in, in, in uh, tone. I mean, everything that you can to kind of set yourself, um, to set your essay sort of up for that storytelling Part that colleges are looking for. One kind of super uh, niche tip is when I worked as a college counselor, um, we sometimes had students write their essay and then choose the prompt. Uh, and when you have a minute, you should take a look at all these essays because they are all so different. Um, but they all have 
the same thing in common, which is like, tell us about a way, tell us about yourself. Tell us about a way that you grew as a person. Um, and so you really don't necessarily have to choose one and write to the prompt. You can write your essay first and kind of see where it's leaning and then choose your prompt. Again, this essay is, is sort of low stress in that way. So that's the Common App Essay Prompt. Um, and it's the one that I recommend that you tackle first because it is so kind of general. Um, let's shift gears now and talk about another essay that you might encounter as a transfer student, which is why do you want to transfer? There is no standardization in the transfer admissions process, unfortunately. There are schools that ask this question, but um, not every school does. Uh, so I don't have a, a good example of one right now, but um, what I do want you to know is that it's a very common question for students to be asked. Why are you leaving the school that you're leaving? Why, are you, why do you wanna to come to our school? Um, when I worked at Hopkins, that was the question. It was, why do you want to, why are you leaving your institution and why do you wanna to come to Hopkins specifically? So any response to this type of question needs to be very clear in answering all the parts. Why do you wanna leave your current school? It's totally fine if you're at a community college and you are looking to get your four-year degree. That's a totally valid reason to leave a current school. Um, so that you can say that, right? Uh, why are you leaving? I'm, I'm leaving because I'll, I'll be earning my associates and I'm looking to earn my, my four-year degree. I'd like to go to Hopkins because, and there you are with the second part, right, of that essay prompt. Um, it is not okay to say, and so that's a valid reason to leave a school. Other valid reasons are um, you're moving and you need a different institution or the institution where you are is not the right fit for you. But just keep in mind that whatever you say, you want to be diplomatic. So it is not OK to say my current school is a party school or my current school is not prestigious enough and I want to go to this more prestigious school. Those are things that are not um, looked upon favorably, even if that's the way you feel. Um, I, I spoke to an applicant at my last webinar who said, well, I want to go to Harvard because they have the connections, right? Like I want to be connected. I want to have job opportunities afterwards. I, I want to you know, network. And those are all totally fine um, reasons, but they're not enough to distinguish an application to Harvard versus an application to Hopkins versus an application to Brown, right? So that's the level, again, that, that's the second part of that question. Why do you want to come to our school? Um, it has to be, it can't just be because I want to go to a, a school that I'm, I'm proud to go to. Or I want to go to a school that's really selective. It has to be more thoughtful than that. Um, so whatever your thoughts are, just know that colleges never look well upon an essay that did, that puts down another school, or at whatever that school is. You want your essay, your, the answer to this, why do you want to transfer question to be as diplomatic as possible. And then again, the why do you want to come to our school? You want to think about your goals and objectives at your new school and be clear about what you're looking to gain. So you can be looking for more opportunities, maybe for research, or maybe you do want to have more opportunities to do internships uh, while you're in school. Um, again, maybe you have to move. And so those are all totally fine and valid reasons um, to want to leave. Just be detailed about what you're looking for and why that school offers that thing, right? So um, you want research opportunities, Great. We know that, you know, a big research university like Boston University, for example, is going to have a lot of research opportunities. It makes perfect sense. You can go a little bit deeper than that, right? Because BC is going to have, Boston College is going to have research, and so will UMass Boston and all the schools in that area, right? So you want to be um, thoughtful about what you're saying. Um, so that's the why do you want to transfer? And then another one that we'll talk about, kind of that fall under this personal statement piece are the um, University of California personal insight questions. Now I said that the common app personal statement is a narrative. This, these questions are not narratives and they're very clear about it. Um, they give you, you know, sort of tips um, and Yes, and then like things to consider. So actually the UC website is a really great resource when you're starting these PIQs is what they're called. But again, they're not narratives. They're very short essay questions. Um, they are a maximum of 350 words and they ask very specific things, right? So describe this example of, of leadership 
and you need to have in your 300 or so words, you need to have a clear answer for that. Um, all the other rules still apply, right? Answer the prompts, um, be specific, be detailed, uh, and also note that both first year and transfer applicants have the same options, except transfer students have one um, additional question, which is required. But beyond that, first year and transfer students to the UCs have the same essay, the same personal insight questions. Um, so be sure again to look underneath each question for some for some tips, uh, I find them to be very helpful. So those are the essay, those are the essay questions that I consider to be kind of like the personal statements um, questions. And then let's also talk about um, supplemental essays. Supplemental essays are now a step further. They are essays that are specific to each school that you are applying to, which means that you will probably find essays for um, you know, right here, like NYU will have different essays than Fordham, for example, but they will both require the Common App essay. And that's why I say start off, start off with the Common App and get that general kind of narrative out of the way, and then you can turn your attention to the supplemental essays. Supplemental essays are super, super important. They are the most important essay um, essays that you'll write because they're distinct to each school, and each school is looking for um, a particular kind of answer. Um, and so let's talk about let's talk about NYU's. And I just pulled these randomly. Uh, you'll notice that these are generally more selective schools. You'll come to find that the more selective the school, the more essays they have, unfortunately. So that's just the reality of applying to a, a highly selective school. So I pulled this again. Um, I went directly to the school's sites and I'm pulling um, their essay questions. And so you'll probably find some some tips within these uh, kinds of posts. But here's the new essay question, NYU, this is a new one for NYU. Um, we're looking for peacemakers, change makers, global citizens, boundary breakers, creatives, innovators. Choose a quote and then tell us why it inspires you or share a short quote and then why that inspires you. Um, you can tell, right, this question, I mean, the beginning of this question, NYU is looking for a particular type of student, right? They want the student who's gonna go out there and do something. They want um, people who are action oriented, they want change, they want people who are going to build community, um, people who are thinking outside of the box. So when you're writing your essay questions, keep the theme in when your your responses to these essay questions, keep the theme in mind, you want to mirror the energy that you're getting back from them. Um, and so again, you can choose any one of these, but keep that general theme in mind because that's all of these quotes have that in common, right? The This uh, theme of being a, a change maker, essentially. Um, and try to mirror that in your response. So again, colleges are telling you exactly what they're looking for. NYU is telling you they want like a very particular type of student. Um, and you want to kind of try to fill that gap as best as you can in your response. So that's NYU's. Let's look at Princeton's. These are transfer essay questions. Again, they, they're largely the same for first year and transfer students. Um, one thing I wanna draw your attention to, depending on the school that you're applying to, so, and by that, I mean, if you're applying to Princeton, if you're applying to like the um, engineering program, you have a particular essay question. And if you're, apply, if you're applying as a liberal arts student, you have a different question. So that's not uncommon. Um, some schools will have more particular uh, questions depending on your area of study. So just note that which way you're going um, will help dictate what, what essays you have to write. I do wanna draw your attention um, to the engineering question. So please describe why you're interested in studying engineering at Princeton, include any of your experiences in or exposure to engineering and how that might um, you know, connect you to what Princeton is offering. Um, Again, colleges are telling you exactly what they're looking for. If you've never had any experience in engineering at all, you have to think about the way you're gonna approach this question. Princeton is telling you that they're looking for students who have that kind of, who have some familiarity with um, engineering. And if you don't have that, again, you need you need to think about how are you going to, to write your response in a way that, that supports your interest in engineering and also appeals to Princeton. 
Um, so that's something I wanted to, to show you to show you. Um, some questions here more about you note the note the word count 50 words or fewer. Um, you don't have the luxury of space. There's nothing to hide behind. Um, you are encouraged to like be yourself, right? But you also want to answer in a way that colleges will find it appealing. So that Princeton will be like, oh, wow, what brings you joy? You know, this really random, particular, specific thing. And that's what you're looking for in these kinds of short answer questions. In my research for this webinar, I found that a lot of schools are going are moving towards these kinds of essay questions. They're not essay questions, but like short answer responses. So something where um, you should be kind of like pithy, witty, uh, you know, a little bit out of the box. Um, Wake Forest had a question a couple of years ago and it was very similar. It was um, just, a, I think like 30 words, like where do you wanna, where would you go if you could go anywhere in the world? And a lot of students that I worked with, they answered very, they answered using what you would expect. Many of them said, Hawaii, I'd go to Bora Bora, I'd go to Tahiti, like very cool places, but um, nothing very distinctive about them. I did have a student who said that she would go to Siberia because she was Russian and her relatives were imprisoned in, the, in gulags in the 1940s. And, and she had a very interesting response. And that's what you're looking for when you have some of these short answer questions. You want a response that's going to help you stand out. And that often means thinking outside of the box. That means stepping out and thinking, what would everyone else say? Or what would, the, what would like an average person say? And then thinking, well, how can, I, how can I tailor it so that it's specific to who I am and what I'm looking for? So um, those are uh, examples of sort of the short answer responses. And I think we'll see a few others. But that's Princeton. And that's um, something I'd like to I wanted to show you. Let's look at Brown um, because they have some very specific uh, types of questions. And you can see here again, essay questions for both first year and transfer applicants. Um, the first one is a commonly asked essay question, this one here, which is uh, tell us about any academic interests uh, that you have and how you might pursue them at Brown. This is what we would consider to be a why Brown essay. Um, so why do you wanna study biology at Brown? And um, you want to be very detailed here. So break the essay down into pieces. Uh, so what do you wanna study? Biology and why at Brown? And you want these very, again, detailed answers that are Brown specific. Um, number one, Go and look up the open curriculum. If you're applying to Brown, Brown's open curriculum is very um, distinctive to Brown. Uh, so you want to be familiar with it so that you can speak to it um, in, this, in this response. And when you think about why you wanna pursue biology, for example, at Brown, think about um, the resources that are offered, research opportunities, internships, um, uh, what, is the, what is the department doing? What are they doing that's different from other schools? How does the open curriculum help you um, attain your academic goal and mentally, like why is that different from what you could do at your local state school? Or, um, you know, you want to really speak to Brown in particular. When you write your answer, reference those Brown specifics, but don't forget to connect it back to what you're looking for. And so, for example, if you want to study biology at Brown, um, talk about your long-term goal. What do you hope to do with that degree from Brown? What happens next, right? So these uh, colleges are a stepping stone to the next thing. Um, and sometimes it can help you kind of connect what you're looking for and what the college is offering if you can talk about um, where you hope that degree will take you. Again, so make that connection um, very explicit for the colleges. That's the level of detail that they're looking for. Another commonly asked essay question um, is what we call the community essay. So here, Brown's saying that you know you you students come, they make their home on College Hill, and then um, share an aspect of your growing up that has inspired or challenged you, and what unique contributions this might allow you to make to the Brown community. So 
I sort of feel like these, these questions are a little bit difficult because it does require a lot of introspection. Um, so what community are you a part of? Um, right, some share part of yourself where uh, that share a part of um, your experiences growing up that has inspired or challenged you. And then how will that allow you to contribute to Brown? Again, two different parts. So identify that thing that's inspired or challenged you and then think about how that will help you give back to the community. Um, think outside the box. That's sort of my biggest tip as well. Uh, so for example, uh, my family's from the Caribbean. I could write my essay as, uh, you know, I, I grew up, you know, um, in a, as, a, as a, a minority woman, and this is how I'll contribute to Brown which is totally fine, but I know that that's a pretty common way to approach that question. Any sort of ethnicity leaning question, I, I think it's it's a, probably a, one of the ways that m many of us think about the world is through that lens, but can I go a little bit deeper? Can I think about, um, you know, I'm a vegetarian and, and this is how uh, I was, um, and why this was an inspiring part of my growing up and this is how I'll contribute to Brown from that point of view. Again, that's not a great example in that I don't think it's particularly interesting, but it is not your typical answer. So um, when you're thinking about this, really try to think about what are you bringing to the table? That's basically what they're asking. What are you bringing to the table? Um, so you're going to want to give yourself a lot of time to think about this when you're writing these kinds of essays because they can really uh, push you. Um, so those are, again, a couple of the, the ones from Brown that I wanted to talk about. Here's another one uh, about what brings you joy, right? We saw that with Princeton. So uh, there are ways where you can use these essay questions um, and kind of group them together by theme to kind of help you think through them. And again, for first year applicants, here are those short answer questions. I told you are very common. Um, and here's one about extracurricular commitment for transfer students. Interesting uh, sort of themes this year. All right, let's look at Wake Forest. These um, are, again, short answer questions, just like we saw with Princeton and um, what we saw with Brown. Uh, I just wanted to bring you back to the idea of theme. Uh, list five books you've read that have intrigued you. Explain how a text you've read has helped you to understand the world's complexity. What piques your intellectual curiosity and why? If you ask me to think of a theme here for Wake Forest, I'd say academic, right? Like these are reading to me very academic. If you're not a reader, you need to become one if you plan to apply to Wake Forest, right? Because how, how else will you respond to these types of questions? Here's um, another one. Uh, give us your top 10 list. This is an interesting one. Wake has done this for years, um, which is basically your way of, of being creative. Uh, so I've seen top 10 places to vacation. Again, sort of standard. Can you get like a level deeper uh, when it comes to like a top 10 list answer? Uh, Wake does say, say that these questions are optional. I'll be honest with you. Uh, it doesn't feel, these questions don't feel optional to me. And again, that's because in my own experience as an admissions reader, they can really help make or break or move the dial a little bit on your applications. So if you have an, apl um, an applicant who's reading very similar to you, you uh, can use your essays to, to kind of help you stand out. Um, we want, you want to showcase your personality and, and that's where these essays, especially these ones that are a little bit more creative um, can really help you stand out. Okay, let's look now, finally, at the University of Chicago's essays. We've seen a lot of standard essay questions so far. Um, University of Chicago sort of famously has uh, very creative essay questions. The first one is a very standard one. How does U Chicago satisfy your desire for particular kind of learning, community, and future? I would call this like a why U Chicago, right? So what are you looking for? What does Chicago offer? How do you, why do you want to go there? Um, again, right, how, how does that, how does everything relate to U Chicago? So you want very detailed Chicago specific answers. And then they do require uh, an extended essay. Um, 
Exponents and square roots, pencils and erasers, beta decay and electron capture, name two things that undo each other in a slide where both are necessary. That's kind of interesting, actually. Um, but if you ask me to advise you on how to write these, I would not be able to do it, frankly, because they're, they're really creative. Um, and I think generally what Chicago is looking for are strong writers who can create reasoning and support that reasoning. So it's really, I think, a test of your critical thinking abilities, honestly. They're not meant to trick you or trip you up, but they are the kinds of questions where maybe you have to create the um, scenario in your head and then uh, find the reasoning for it. So I can't imagine how they read these essay questions uh, in their admissions committees. It must be a lot of fun and also um, exhausting. But that's U Chicago, and, and um, they're a really great school. I know a lot of applicants apply there, so I wanted to highlight that. And obviously, uh, without it almost goes without saying, but big tip for these types of essays, do not give yourself two hours to write them, right? You, these are essays that you need to go back and think about and um, brainstorm and then maybe go back and, and have another person read. And um, these are essays that really require a lot of thought and time. Okay, so we've talked about all of these things. Um, I do want to address that service to school does have what's called a, a, the VetLink addendum. So if you're not familiar, the VetLink addendum is um, a service to school military resume that will accompany your application to any vet link partner schools that you apply to um, and it has an essay component that essay is military it's about your your service essentially and um, what you've learned and, and how that's prepared you for college we're actually having a webinar later this month my colleague Whitney um, is hosting that webinar and it's all about the vet link addendum and how you can put together the best um, addendum and so I would encourage you to go to that uh, webinar if you can or catch a recording of it, because I think that's really going to help you um, when it comes to the vet link essay. So I'll leave that for for Whitney. Let's talk now about the, the tips and we're just doing a quick summary. Uh, my general tips for for these types of questions uh, are make it personal right, this is a, a personal statement these essay questions, as you can see are kind of trying to get at who you are. What's your personality like? What are you into? Um, so these are personal essays. Uh, make it personal. It's not your typical academic essay. No need to use a thesaurus. No need to write in a way that doesn't feel natural to you. Uh, no need for any kind of formal sort of essay structure. Um, and use detailed recent examples from your life. Don't harken back to like the olden days. Um, you want to talk about who you are today. Um, of course, you can reference things that, that have happened previously, but you want the essay to really be about who are you right now. Um, so that's those are sort of like general tips uh, for the essay. And then the make the connection. That's that's huge for the supplemental supplemental essays in particular. What are you looking for? What does the college offer? And that's the response is. Um, or the, the connection or the where the intersection is where you want your response to be. You want to be able to pull together those two things in a supplemental essay. So make the connection for them very clear. They're asking themselves, why would you be a good fit at, um, you know, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill? Why would you be a good fit? Well, you have the ability to show them in that supplemental essay. Here's what I'm looking for. Here's what UNC offers. And this is why I'd be the right fit for that school. So make the connection for them. Think outside the box where you can. So in those essays that are asking you to think or to identify a part of yourself, um, a characteristic, uh, a, um, a personality trait, something from your, your life experience, think outside the box. Try to go a little bit deeper. Ask yourself, what would the average person say? And then try to um, go a little bit beyond that read between the lines you know we've seen some themes come up for NYU we saw that sort of action oriented uh um personality come through that's what they're looking for in their applicants wake we, I I was impressed at the level of academic rigor that they're looking for in their applicants so read between the lines try to give that um 
those try to echo those themes back to them so that again they know that you're making that connection um, that you're you're the right fit for their for that school and if you're not the right fit in that maybe you haven't read a book in a long time you can start reading now i think um and then make it relevant uh so you want to share new information don't just share the same story over and over so your common app essay should be its own story and then everything else that you're sharing in the supplemental essays um should be different and by that i mean if you're writing essays for uh, Princeton and Brown, obviously, you're going to have some overlap. We, we saw that they both asked the question about the joys, and that's what, what brings you joy, and that's totally fine. But for every Princeton essay, it should share something new, or at least you shouldn't be repeating what they already know about you. Um, and then a huge, huge tip, answer all parts of the prompt. It is truly wild how often people forget to answer all the parts. And so when you're when a person is in an, an admissions committee, they're wondering like, why why did this person want to come here again? And it's not there because of the applicant simply didn't answer that part. So make sure that you're um, answering all parts of the prompts very clearly. So in the person who's reading your file can do the best advocacy work. Why does this person want to come to our school? Oh yeah, it's, it's right here. Here is my contact information, uh, Annie at service to school.org. I send out weekly, um, not weekly, that would be crazy. I would send out monthly um, emails about what's going on, where you should be, what you should be working on when it comes to your college applications. Um, and I host monthly webinars as well. So uh, you can always catch me. Feel free to email me, send me your essays. I'd love to read them. I have a couple of questions I can answer now. And if anyone has any, feel free to drop them in the Q&A box. All right. Is it possible to provide a bad answer for optional questions or essays? So good question. Um, yes, it's possible to provide a bad, well, a bad answer would be one that offends people. Um, and that's one that you wanna stay away from, right? So if you truly can't think of anything, um, again, diplomatic um, to say, don't answer that question. But in terms of like truly optional questions, like we saw with Wake Forest, you know, is there a bad answer? No, there isn't. I think some answers are better than others, right? In terms of like how often that reader will encounter that answer in, in while they're reading applications. Um, but there's no bad answer, you know? So if, if you wanted to, if you wrote, where do you wanna to travel to? I wanna to go to Hawaii. That's not a bad answer at all. Um, the only bad answer would be again, some, an essay. It, an answer that offends someone. But beyond that, you, ha you have the ability to kind of be thoughtful about what you're responding, what you're saying. Um, and so that's why I encourage you to think a, a layer deeper when it comes to those uh, questions. Okay. I personally hate talking about myself and also have a hard time starting to write. What are common topics that are written about and should we also avoid certain topics? Great question. Um, what are common topics that are written about? It depends on the essay question. Um, you know, for a personal statement, like a common app essay, there are a ton of like, uh, what we call like a sports essay, right? Like we were down three points and then, um, you know, someone did something and, and all of a sudden we won. Like those essays are very common. Um, I would generally stay away from any sports related essay. Um, I honestly, if you have a hard time talking about yourself and a hard time writing, what I would do is I would gather all the essays. So as you're filling out the application, you're going to encounter the essay, copy and paste them into a Google Doc, and then take a look at them in aggregate and try to identify like where can you lump together the ones that are similar, uh, right? That you, that way you don't have to um, write every one of them from scratch. Uh, and then brainstorm. So I used to have my students do this all the time where I'd have them write like one or two sentences for every question. That's it, one or two sentences and see where it goes. And then you can figure out um, if it's a question that you want to answer, if you need to go a different route. But the truth is you need time to do that. And that's why we encourage you to start your essays as soon as possible within reason, of course, of when you're applying. Should you avoid certain topics? Like I said, the the those sort of essay questions, um, that are like sports related or it's very common for students to write about students 
high school students, adults to write about what their long-term goal is. I used to have applicants who, when they applied to Hopkins, they would always say, and this is why I want to become a doctor. Cool. You can do that in four years after these four years. You know, like you don't become a doctor by going to uh, undergraduate. Uh, and so I encourage you to kind of think about your undergraduate years versus the long, long-term goal of, of, you know, going to, um, uh, of going to a particular graduate program. Um, so just be thoughtful about who your audience is. Now, I do wanna show you um, some essay questions or some common essays that you can see. And let's see. We're gonna look at essays that worked and there are a couple of schools that offer this. So Johns Hopkins every year, they pull out essays um, that they liked uh, and uh, that work essentially and that these students were admitted and that their essays are um, sort of examples. So uh, if you wanted to see like what's out there, don't be overwhelmed when you look at these because obviously these are really well done essays and that's why they're here featured on this website. Uh, but I do always like that they include comments. Um, so you can know how was it received and, and again, use that feedback when you're writing your own essays. Hamilton College also does essays that work. And so these are, again, just ways for you to see um, good examples. Okay, and I have one more question. Are most of the transfer essay questions inside Common App? Yes, um, most of them are. So if you are applying using the Common App, as you're filling out the application, you're going to encounter those essay questions. Um, yeah, they're almost all entirely there. It's pretty rare for you to have to do anything outside of the application. Now that's for the Common App. Um, the UC application is similar, but um, when it comes to particular applications, for example, Brown has a veterans application. Um, Yale has a particular application for the Eli Whitney program. For those kind of special programs, um, you might have essays like in different places and that'll take a little bit of like work on your part to figure out where can you find them and, and do you have everything, but um, mostly everything is, is right within the application. And that's all I have for now. Um, thank you for coming. And if you do have any questions, thoughts, concerns, email me at Annie at service to school. Uh, but uh, we really appreciate um, that you that you're really appreciate you coming to this webinar. Okay, have a good night.